This is the third video in our series looking at how we set up and configure a Google Nest Wi-Fi mesh network. In our previous video, we looked at how we can avoid something called double NAT. This was achieved by repurposing or replacing the broadband hub that our internet service provider had issued us with. So with our broadband hub now acting as a modem, in this video, we're going to configure our Google Nest Wi-Fi router so that it will use our modem to act as a conduit to connect us to the internet. However, in order to connect our Google Nest Wi-Fi router to our modem, we will need to know what type of broadband connection we are using and what settings we need to use in order to connect to the internet. So after checking with our internet service provider, we found out that we are using a VDSL connection. Our ISP was also able to provide us with the PPPoE settings we need to use in order to reconnect to the internet. Before we start, we need to point out that in order to complete the initial setup and configuration of our Google Nest Wi-Fi router, we will need to use a device that has an independent connection to the internet. This means that for this part of the setup, while we will be using the Google Home app, we will also be using a mobile phone which has a connection to the internet via a data plan. So in order to ensure that our mobile phone is not using Wi-Fi to connect to the internet, we need to open our Wi-Fi settings and then force our phone to forget any existing wireless access points that our phone is currently using. With our phone now connected to the internet only through its data plan, we can now open the Google Home app. As the Google Home app uses Bluetooth to help it find devices near our phone, when prompted to allow Google Home to use Bluetooth, we should select OK. We now need to select Get Started. In order to be able to configure any Google device, we will need to sign into Google Home using a Google account. As you can see, the Google Home app has detected an existing Google account that we're currently using on our phone. However, if we do not wish to use this account, there is an option to use a different Google account. For this example, we will select our existing account and then choose OK. While all of our Google devices can be grouped together, we can create and use multiple groups. However, for simplicity, we're going to use the default group called Home. After selecting Next, our phone will use location access to work out which devices are nearby. As you can see, after a short delay, the Google Home app will find any devices that it can see are available for setup. We know that this device is our Google Nest Wi-Fi router because the same device name has been stamped onto the rubberized base of our router. Let's select Next. In order for Google Home to connect to our router, we need to submit a setup code. This can be done either via a QR code or by manually entering a code into our app. For our example, we will be manually entering the setup code into the Home app. So we will select No QR Code. As we are now trying to wirelessly connect to our Google Nest Wi-Fi router, we need to enter our setup code. You will find that the setup code has been printed on the bottom of your router. With our setup code entered into the app, when we select Next, the Google Home app will first ask for permission to try and connect to our router. After selecting Join, as long as we've entered the correct setup code into the app, we will be connected to our router. We are now shown the WAN or Wide Area Network panel. This panel is used to configure our router so that it is able to connect to the internet via our modem. As you can see, we have three options, DHCP, which is the default, Static IP, and PPPoE. 
as our broadband connection uses something called Very High Speed Digital Subscriber Line, or VDSL, our router will connect to the internet by using our modem and something called PPPoE. However, as not all internet service providers use ADSL or VDSL connections, you may need to check with your ISP as to what WAN settings you should be using. After selecting PPPoE, in the account name, we need to enter the username that our ISP has provided us with. Next in the password field, we need to enter the password that was assigned to our PPPoE account. Finally, we need to confirm our PPPoE password by retyping the password into the Confirm Password field. When we select Save, our WAN settings are applied. Unfortunately, as you can see, our Google Home app seems to have encountered a problem connecting to the internet. So if you experience the same behavior, by simply selecting Done, you will be returned to the Choose a Home panel. If we now select Next, the Google Home app will once again search for any new devices and should find our Google Nest Wi-Fi router. However, this time when we select Next, rather than display the WAN panel, we're asked to create a Wi-Fi name. So in the Wi-Fi name field, we simply need to type the name that we would like to give to the wireless access point that we're about to create. After choosing Next, we need to create a password for our wireless access point. When choosing a password, we recommend that you make your Wi-Fi password at least eight characters long using a combination of both upper and lower case letters, numbers, and at least one non-letter character. When we select Next, we're asked if we want to turn on Wi-Fi router and point usage stats. For this setting, we've decided to choose to use No Thanks. In the Turn on Nest Wi-Fi Cloud Services panel, we decided to also choose to use No Thanks. In the Where is this device panel, as this setting will make it easier to keep our devices organized, we will set our router's location to the office. When we select Next, our wireless network is created. This process will take roughly 90 seconds to complete. With our wireless network now created, we are provided with the option to add additional Wi-Fi points to create a mesh network. However, as we will be looking at how we create a mesh network in a future video, for now we will select No. Finally, we are asked if we wish to receive email notifications about Google products and features. However, as this is not something that we are currently interested in, we will select No Thanks. Our Google Nest Wi-Fi router will now look for any updates before it displays a summary of our new Wi-Fi network. Let's select Continue to display our home page. While this mobile phone is now connected to the new wireless network that we've just created for our router, we should test that we're able to connect to the internet and that the firewall built into our Google Nest Wi-Fi router is working correctly. If we jump over to a computer and make sure that it's connected to our new wireless access point, now by opening a web browser and searching for the term Shields Up, we can both confirm that our router is connected to the internet and check its firewall. If our router is correctly connected to the internet, our search results should display a link to a website called Shields Up by Gibson Research. If we select this link, we are taken to the Shields Up website. By selecting Proceed, we are shown the Shields Up services. Now, as a quick and simple test of our firewall, we're going to select the All Service Ports option. First, we're shown the public IP address for our broadband connection. Shields Up will then examine the first 1056 ports on our router's firewall, marking each port as either open, closed, or stealth. 
Ideally at this stage, all 1056 ports should return a result of stealth. However, if you find that a port is marked as either open or closed, this does not necessarily signify a problem with your firewall. When ShieldsUp completes its test, it reports on the status of the firewall on our new Google Nest Wi-Fi router. So to summarize, as we are looking to avoid double NAT, we need to connect our Google Nest Wi-Fi router to a modem or a device in bridge or modem mode. We then configured our new Google Nest Wi-Fi router using the Google Home app and a mobile phone. Finally, we tested both our new wireless network and the firewall built into our router. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at how we can expand our wireless network by adding a Wi-Fi point to our Google Nest Wi-Fi router.